I still grind. I love to grind. If you're competing in one of my businesses, I'm gonna kick your ass because I'm gonna outgrind you. Having lived the life I've lived and seeing the other side, not being afraid to attack what was in front of me has made me happy. Right now, you're being rewarded for being a yes person, and in 36 months, you're gonna be fired for being a yes person. What's up, Believe Nation? It's Evan. My one word is believe, and I believe in you. I believe you have Michael Jordan-level talent at something, and I want you to find it, embrace it, and use it to make a difference. Now, the Believe Life series is a different spin where once a week we're looking at topics outside of just pure hardcore entrepreneurship. So to help you live your best Believe Life, today we're gonna look at the mindset of high achievers. Enjoy. So let's kick it off with rule number one with Mark Cuban, grind. I'm not Mr. Mentor. I'm not the one who says, let's sit down, <laughs> tell me how it's going. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you exactly how I am. Get off your ass and get out there and sell something. That's right. I mean, I've never been the, okay, I need a mentor. You know, a lot of people look for mentors thinking they're going to tell me the shortcut. Ah, Mark, will you be my mentor? You know the way. And they think I'm going to go, Ooh, and be like, convey some magics. Here's the dust. Go, go, go. It doesn't work that way. I still grind. I love to grind. If you're competing in one of my businesses, I'm going to kick your ass because I'm going to outgrind you, right? That's what being an entrepreneur, yeah, an entrepreneur is. You've got to get out there and do the work. So when it comes to how do you learn, right? Because that's the question. How do I learn this stuff? Man, everybody, everybody has got to go through that process, right? I read our, I'm in the tech business. I'm in the media business, the entertainment business. I've got to try to prepare myself for all the Shark Tank businesses. I read three hours plus a day, right? Well, everybody else is getting a suntan or even when I'm getting a suntan, I've got, I'm online or I've got books. I'm reading all I can. Rule number two with Jocko Willink, make every second count. Rome wasn't built in a day. We all know that. Everyone hears that. But Rome also didn't fall apart overnight either. It took hundreds of years for Rome to reach its peak but it also took time, hundreds of years, for Rome to decay and fall apart. And that is representative of life. Because you don't achieve worthwhile goals quickly or easily. They take time. They take struggle. They take relentless pursuit day in and day out. That's what it takes. But also, things don't usually fall apart quickly either. At least at first, it, it's, it's a slow process. A little slip here. A little setback over there. A little wearing down of discipline and will over time. That's the thing. Success and failure are generally slow processes. Either slowly building things up or gradually tearing them down. And that's why I say you've got to pay attention. You have to watch. You have to watch every single second. Because those seconds, they turn into minutes. And minutes turn into hours, and hours turn into days, and days turn into years.
And so that second, that second that just went by, that counted. And so did that second. And so did that one. And in those precious seconds, you were either building or you were decaying. You were either gaining ground or you were losing ground in that second. And in every second. Every second counts. So make every second count. Rule number three with David Goggins is be fueled by pain. So many people do. We live in a very weakened society. So when they hear a throwback guy like me from back in the ancient days of, <laughs> of Garanimals, they often think this guy is just whatever. So if you think that I'm some unhappy guy, you're wrong. Having lived the life I've lived and seeing the other side, not being afraid to attack what was in front of me has made me happy. Say that again. And in fact, let me make sure I understood it. Getting to the point where you're not afraid to face the thing on the other side of the door that wants to attack you has made you happy. Right, right. It's really powerful. I hope people heard that. Right. That made me very happy. So basically, I just don't walk around with a dad going to smile on my face all the damn time. So, you know, Merry Christmas. But, um, but basically, what the dark side is, is we all have a cookie jar, and we all have a jar of fuck. <laughs> That's its official name. It's a jar of fuck, man, where shit just, it just ain't going right. And in Hell Week, what they do in Hell Week because this is where I really went to the dark side. Mm. What they do in Hell Week is they design Hell Week to find your flaws. And they do a really good job of that. It's 130 hours of continuous training. You may get two hours of sleep. And they beat the shit out of you and find everything wrong with your mentality. And then they start Hell Week. And that's the beauty of it. And for me... I'm not some you know, nasty guy giving guy. You know, I don't have a great bit of talent in anything. So what got me through horrible times was the dark side. Was I created, my name is David Goggins. I created Goggins. Goggins is the guy that can take anything you put in front of him. You want to break my legs? So be it. I have a way of going to a place like I did in that race where all the pain and suffering that they put on top of me in Hell Week, I will reverse that pain and suffering and I will take your soul. So every instructor that put me through buds, my job, what drove me was I wanted you to go home that night after you beat the living shit out of me and I smiled in your face. I wanted you to feel worse than I did and you were going home to a nice warm bed with your wife or your kids in a nice meal, and I was still out there in the grip, suffering for another 100 hours. I wanted you to think about me knowing that I'm comfortable being very uncomfortable. And I want you to think about when you went through Hell Week, how uncomfortable you were and how bad you wanted to quit, knowing I'm not thinking that way. So the dark side is something that I've designed. It's an evil place I can go that very few things can hurt me. I use the hurt you're trying to put on me. I flip it upside down and use it. You trying to use it for kryptonite? No. It's power pillars for me. I'm, I'm using it for strength. I just flip negative into positive. That's all it is. Rule number four with Gary Vaynerchuk is die on your own sword. It is far more fun to die on your sword than to die on someone else's. I'm inspired, YouTube. We're gonna make this the episode thing. You'll get whatever you want, Tyler, but this is the core of it. You just saw it on stage. Oh, sorry. You just saw it on stage. Dying on your sword is better than dying on someone else's. So many of you are doing things, making decisions, and navigating your lives based on somebody else's thesis. You're doing it because you think 
it's the right thing because your dad's telling you it's the right thing. You're doing what you're doing right now because you're pandering to your boss even though you don't believe in it. This is how it's gonna play out. You are doing things right now. Yesterday, you made a decision that you don't believe in, but you're smart. You did it because you know how your company scores. Here's the problem with disruption and innovation. Right now, you're being rewarded for being a yes person, and in 36 months, you're gonna be fired for being a yes person. And you're doing it because you just need the security of your job. I'm telling you right the now, if you're watching this vlog, and you've got, like, that means you have a certain DNA. Please, I implore you, please die on your sword, not somebody else's. If you're gonna lose, it's much more fun to lose based on what you thought. Do you know, I mean, do you know how many of you are gonna lose on somebody else's thesis? It's gonna kill at you, it's gonna eat at you, it's going to be the worst feeling, so please, pause this video right now and ask yourself, am I doing my shit because of me? Then you're good, whether you're winning or losing. Or am I doing it because somebody else is telling me it's the right way? Or I'm subconsciously pandering to please somebody or something because I need the short term stability. Figure that the fuck out. You know it and I know it. You just need to do something about it. And rule number five, the last one before a very special bonus clip is with Tim Grover, be fueled by failure. We try so hard in our lives to fit in. We try to fit into certain groups, certain frats, certain sororities, you know, among certain friends, yet the people we idolize are most are the ones that stand out. But when you're prepared, there is no fear. There is no fear of failure, okay? Because even if you've walked out of something and you feel like you failed at it, your preparation is so strong that you're gonna take that failure and turn it into the outcome you desire. And most people stop at failure, okay? We've all failed at things. I'm gonna continue to fail at stuff, right? It's the most powerful tool you can use, but it all depends on how you use it. You know, we talk about it in Relentless, okay? A scalpel, okay? In the hands of an individual, it can do unbelievable damage. In the hands of a professional, of a doctor, it saves lives. So it's the same thing with failure. It's how you use it. It's that drive inside of you, okay? It's what we talk about, the dark side. The dark side is filled with failure, but it's the fuel that burns you like something that's never burned inside you before. Now I've got a really special bonus clip with Eric Thomas on how to not be average that I think you're really gonna enjoy. But before that, I wanna know between these two, which one is more important to you, grinding or making every second count? Vote A for grinding, B for making every second count. Let me hear your thoughts down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I believe in you. I hope you continue to believe in yourself and whatever your one word is. Much love, I'll see you soon and enjoy the bonus clip. Now listen, what I want to talk to you tonight about is don't be average. Don't be average. Average people make a certain amount of money. Average people live a certain type of lifestyle. And I'm not disrespecting average people. I'm just saying, if you have a choice, don't be average. Because in life, when you roll the dice, worst case scenario, you're going to land on average. So don't be average because if you don't try, you will get to average, right? So let's not shoot for average because average is going to be there. So I need you to be what? What's the P word? I need you to be what? Come on, I need you to be what? I don't need you to be nothing else. When you do your job, you do it in a way where no, that you cannot get fired. Talking to my wife today, she's like, I want you to clean up. I'm like, we about to get it to you. I want you to clean up. I'm like, how? Because I know you want it a different way than how I do it. I clean average. <laughs> I'm just being real. I clean average. So when you say clean, you have to break that down. Because I know with my clean and your clean, it's two different cleans. No, I'm trying to help you. It's two different cleans. My wife said you don't clean. You shift. <laughs> So you take stuff from one area and you put another area, that area clean, but then the other area, when I clean, you don't see nothing, everything's gone. Some of you, when you get a job, you shift, you don't clean. So I need you to find out what productive is when you get to that internship, you get that job, you get in that relationship with that female, that male, whatever you do, I need you to find out what productive, not what you think productive is, find out what's really productive. And you do that and you ain't going, they can't get rid of you.
And if you tell yourself a story long enough, you start to believe it. Once you believe it, you act like it. I have tussled with a whale out of handcuffed lightning, throw thunder in jail. Now you know I'm bad. Only last week I murdered a rock, injured a stone, hospitalized a brick. I'm so mean I make medicine sick. <laughs> the fundamental key to success is it can take between 18 and 254 days of taking action for a new habit to stick. I've created a new course called 254 Confidence where every single day for 254 days I will be sending you a video between 30 seconds and 5 minutes long that you start your morning with around making you feel confident. It's absolutely free. Check out the link in the description below to get access.